It seems like since you've dropped down uh, to 205 that you've really put a lot of focus on your speed, your hand speed, your footwork, your head movement. How much do you feel that you're prepared now in that department? Well, I've worked on it a ton. You know, my I, I was worried about my speed actually being like kind of leveling out because at heavyweight I was kind of like this in terms of hand speed. And as you lose weight, you know, the guys get faster. But I've done some things that I normally wouldn't do. Like I do a lot of uh, uh, agility and speed things now, strength and conditioning to try and help with my speed. Um, obviously, uh, just just really, I've really focused on that area now. So I think it's catching up to everything else. Um, am I prepared to fight with the fast guys at 205? Yes. You know, I, I really do believe so. You had said that even Patrick Cummings was, in fact, he tested that. He tested yeah, exactly. that in your first fight, and you felt that. So being that you had that one fight and that experience, do you feel that now you're ready to truly take it on, or do you still need some more time? No, no, I mean, I have to be ready. I'm fighting Dan Henderson. You know, you don't have, it's not time to actually go in there thinking, well, I've got some stuff to learn when you're going in with a guy like Dan. So, um, no, I'm ready to go. You know, I'm not. nothing's going to surprise me anymore. You know, the speed isn't going to surprise me. Uh, I'm ready to go. And uh, I had heard from Luke Rockhold that Daniel, I mean Dan Henderson, so he brought in some of the uh, Popeye's chicken to your training room. And I was curious how that went for you, what you thought of his attempt to sabotage you. I thought it was pretty cool, you know. I mean, he's a pretty quick-witted guy. He, uh, he's, uh, he's a lot quicker-witted than I thought. You know, I mean, you know, you, you see Dan, and Dan seems pretty serious. You know, he's a nice guy. He's pretty serious, but... He's pretty, he's pretty funny, you know. We, spent, we were together a lot on Monday in Los Angeles. That's probably the most time we've ever spent together. Uh, then um, we were, uh, you know, all week kind of running into each other, and he does the Popeyes thing, you know. So I kind of have a new respect for Dan Henderson's humor a little bit. But I didn't need it. Didn't touch. <laughs> didn't touch it. But the rest of the guys did. They kept going into the bathroom uh -huh. and coming out, like, with this, this look on their face. I was like, you guys are eating chicken in there, aren't you? And they were. Look of shame, just like. We can't all not eat Popeye's chicken. Well, how is the weight cut going? Where are you at right now? It's going great. This morning I was 213. So, I mean, I'm seven and a half, eight pounds overweight. Uh, and I haven't put my plastics on. I haven't done anything. So, I'm good. When you look at the last fight that Dan had, had against Mauricio Shogun Hua and you compare it to just the sheer power that he has and the ability that he has with that one punch, what do you think about that one punch that everybody knows could be coming from from Hendo. I mean, I think it's honestly the greatest single weapon in MMA. Like, um, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I think his right hand is the most dominant single weapon in mixed martial arts. Uh, Ronda Rousey's armbar, I, I think Dan Henderson's right hand is the most single-handedly most powerful dominant equalizer in mixed martial arts because he can get it from anywhere. Uh, so, uh, because of that, I've, I've spent a lot of time and I've focused really hard on making sure he doesn't hit me with his right hand. I can't let him wind up, you know, like if he winds up and hits me, that's when you go to sleep. Do you notice though that like even in that Hua fight, it was even kind of cocked right on the side, he was it's just kind of... ready to go, yeah, it's like a gun in a holster. He's ready to let that thing fly. So you're not at all trying to anticipate it in the midst of the fight at all? Well, I mean, I better anticipate that he's going to be swinging that thing. You know, I mean, why wouldn't he? It's like Thor's hammer. You gotta swing it, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'll be I'll be always watching for him to throw his big right hand. But you know, Dan has power in both of his hands, not just his right hand.